Ali are still with us and they'll be joined by a final guest in just a moment. Now, Ali Masoudi is a name that you should familiarize yourself with. He's 22 years old and is one of Algeria's swimming champions. Ali is trying to challenge prejudices about disability by pursuing his hobbies and mixing that with winning medals. Iman Al Said has this story about a young man who started swimming when he was eight and has already won 15 medals. Wow. Ali Masoudi was born without hands and only one foot, and he's determined not to let his condition hinder him from having a normal life. But this is no ordinary life. For five consecutive years, Ali has won gold medals for best disabled swimmer in Algeria's official annual swimming tournaments. Algeria gives disabled people an allowance of 2,000 dinars per month. That's about 15 pounds. It barely covers the minimum of what they need. Ali decided a long time ago that he doesn't want that help. He found himself a job in a mobile phone shop selling telephones. I noticed that the clients who come here always get astonished when they see me. Because despite my disability, I can easily put the SIM card in the phone and do the configuration and other things like that. Ali refuses to be beaten down by being labelled as disabled. He chooses to do bodybuilding, and his coach says that Ali's strength and willpower is beyond extraordinary. He has strong will and trains very well. We'd like young people to follow his example because Ali is an example for people who are like him. It's his positive attitude that Ali says pulls him through the more difficult moments of life like times when people look at him funny or think that he's no good. He says he has a message to give, and whether it is through swimming, selling phones, bodybuilding or even painting, he's determined to keep that message spreading. The difficulties that we as a disabled people have are exactly what has pushed me to do all that I am doing, to reach my goal to prove that I am able, because the disabled in our society are seen as incapable. A person who needs help, a person that can do nothing. I wanted to change all these ideas and send the message that the disabled are not incapable people, that we can be useful to society. Swimming isn't Ali's only hobby. As a child, he travelled to London twice to receive surgical treatment. And it was on the long hours he spent in the hospital that he acquired painting skills. Back in Algeria, he turned the skills into works of art, and in 2012, Ali won a gold medal for best glass painting for disabled artists. You know, I think that's such an inspirational story. Indeed it is, and we're joined now by a successful swimmer who has set his own charity, Level Water, which helps disabled children get into swimming. Good evening, Ian. Wait, welcome to the show. How are you, Ian? Good evening. Yeah, very well. Thanks now, for we having me. We were just me. discussing uh, that story there, something you were very pleased to hear about. Yeah, well, it's, it ties in very nicely with the work we do at Level Water. Yeah. So, um, you know, we, we help disabled children in the UK um, aged between 4 and 11 get a fair start in sport because it's, it's not easy for them to start. Um, you know, it's harder to play team sports, it's, it's harder to learn to swim, it can be unsafe um, or ineffective to, to learn in normal groups. So, quite often they need that little leg up to get started and then, yeah. and then can carry on, as, as you see, and can, can go all it. the way. I mean, you were yeah. quite successful. Top six, you said? Top 10 in the country? Yeah, around that, in your back, back in my day. I mean, that's, that's pretty good going. <laughs> what made you think about looking at children who are disabled getting into swimming? Well, it's, it's two things, really. I think, first of all, it's the statistics were, were startling. So swimming, is, sport generally, is an incredible thing mm. to grow up with. And, yeah. and all of those things you learn from it around self-confidence and, and passion and belief and teamwork. Um, so you know, I've always believed in the power of sport. Mm. Um, disabled yeah. children are one third as likely as able-bodied children to be active members of sports clubs mm. outside of school, mm. which is just startling. I mean, this is a group that would probably benefit even more from all those positive things than, than their able-bodied peers. Um, but also it's the personal side, you know, the individual stories of the children we work with. And, you know, repeatedly we keep hearing families say, you know, I, I knew he could do it, I knew there was something out there for him, but yeah. we just didn't know where to start, yeah. didn't know where to find the help. And, um, now, if we can create a, a network that makes it easier for people to do that around the country, then that's you know, yeah. work worth doing. Mm. I mean, Level Water is something you said quite recently. What's been the response so far from people? It's been fabulous. So we started um, effectively after the Olympic and Paralympic Games right. in 2012. I and mean, the Paralympic Games are phenomenal. I mean, I remember the advert, thank you for the warm-up, and right enough. Yeah. Mm. 
it yeah, was it really was something. It was completely groundbreaking yeah. in terms of the the public interest. It's the first time all the tickets have been sold. I mean, over the it. years, I don't think there's been as much interest in the Paralympics as there was this time round. Nothing like, nothing like. As I say, they, they've never sold all the tickets for Paralympic Games yeah. before this time, and I think it's done an awful lot of good for the public perception of what disabled people are capable of achieving. I mean, and, you know, it just shows what, what human incredible bodies are. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. What about you guys? Watch the Paralympics? Absolutely, course, wonderful. Yeah. Absolutely wonderful. What was your highlight from the Paralympics and the Olympics, of course? Uh, I can't remember, David Weir. We, we David Weir, yeah, yeah. yeah. He was, um, he was one of my favourites, definitely. Yeah. yeah, bring back a lot of memories. I mean, That was 100 metres, wasn't it? And what kind of advice would you give, Ian, uh, for those looking to take up swimming who, who are disabled? Sure. I mean, I think the, the first thing is to try and find a, a local group that's supportive. Right. Um, and you know, we're growing now across the south of England mm -hmm. and hopefully through the country in the next year or two. Um, but yeah, the onus is really still on parents at the moment. Mm -hmm. And for parents to go out and... You know, first of all, I think be advocates on behalf of their children yeah. and fight and fight to say this child needs special attention mm -hmm. and I expect mm. you know, my swimming lesson provider to find a way to yeah. make it work. Um, but I think the other thing is for parents to, to educate themselves <clears throat> and to have the confidence to take their own children into the water. Sure. You know, the, the first five, six, eight years of, of swimming really <laughs> are about water confidence and very basic skills. And if a parent is comfortable in the water, they can mm -hmm. do an awful lot of that for their child. Yeah. Ian, thank you so much for joining us. Do pleasure. stay with us. We'll be giving away your Indeed. contact information a bit shortly. But now moving on to something uh, slightly different.